Today I'm going to look at eight common wayfinding design mistakes and look at the solutions. Let's get straight into it. So eight common signage wayfinding design mistakes. Issue number one, placement and hidden signage. It's not just about how you design and make the signage. It's about placement and position. This is very important. You can have the best signs in the world, but you have to position them where they can be easily seen by the people that need to see them. In this situation, as you're walking towards this sign, it's actually blocked by a much bigger sign in front of it. So you can't see the speed limit and this just doesn't make sense. So you've got to think about positioning of signs, not just the making and the design of the sign itself. Number two, clutter or what could be called clustering, what I call clustering, putting lots of signs together, like in a cluster. So you can see in this photograph that I took in Plymouth, England, of the old bus station, there's so many signs that are put together in such a small space, it creates confusion. Think also the fact that the people approaching and using these signs are people in cars. So they're approaching at a certain speed. There's not the time to read all of these signs. So you don't want to put too many signs in one place. Issue number three, difficult writing on signs to read. So it's illegible. On this sign, this is in a park and this is aimed at cyclists. And there's no way that they could possibly be able to read the cycling information as they go by. It's just too small. Now, when you place and position signage, sometimes you have to be practical. So sometimes you have to use poles like this. But still, you want to make the writing as clear as possible. One way to do this is to use the minimal amount of writing or symbols that you can, but make what you do use clear and easy to see and easy to understand. So really, you would almost need a magnifying glass to read this as you're cycling by. And I've said there, you have to think about who the participants are. Who is the sign aimed at? If it's a pedestrian, you can get away with smaller information because as they're approaching the sign, they still have time to read it. Whereas if somebody is a driver, they're approaching the sign at possibly 20, 30, 40 miles per hour. So consider who your users are when you're designing signage, when you're creating a wayfinding system. Number four, a wayfinding system which is not maintained. You would have heard me on other videos talking about signage maintenance. And this is so often the cause of people getting lost and bad wayfinding systems. Signage is not being maintained. That's the biggest problem that I come across just about. You can see here, I mean, I've just put a picture here of a sign that is just neglected and left on, on the floor. It's very common. So you have to have somebody who manages the signage system, who goes around, say, once a week or once a month and checks every sign and is in charge of organizing replacement or fixes. This is important in wayfinding. Number five, cluttered and badly designed signs. So this is different from cluttered, which I talked about earlier, where there's a lot of signs in one place. This is where one sign is cluttered with information. Once again, you would need a magnifying glass to be able to read the smaller writing on this sign. And I know it's information they're writing for legal purposes, but this isn't the place to be doing this on a sign. And also, why is there information about smokers on this car parking sign? It's such a mix. that There's just way too much information on the sign. It's not designed at all for the user. So when you're designing signage, once again, remember who the user is and design with clear information. The less information, the better. As I've said there, can you imagine driving and being in any way able to read some of the lettering and words on this signage? And smoking information does not belong on parking information. It should be kept apart that they serve two very, very different purposes. Number six, the misuse of icons and symbols. This happens a lot. A white P on a blue background is very common for parking. Now, I would not have two different colors, two different symbols. You could send them to that parking, and then as soon as they're at the entrance of that parking, then you separate them. 
So just have one symbol for parking and keep with the traditional sign. There's no need to design it in this way. And another example of misuse of signs, well, you can see here that there are two signs, and, it, and this is in a hospital in the United Kingdom. There are two signs pointing to each other, and they both say main entrance, but they're pointing in different directions. So again, this is about placement. This is about the overall strategy. One sign on itself will not do the job of wayfinding. Signs need to work together and be planned together. And there should be one color system, one type of signage design, not different companies with different signs which conflict. You want one company, one set of designs, and they work together. Decision points in the wrong places. When you approach a sign, that sign should be where it needs to be at the point where you're making a decision, not before or not after. So decision points are very important. I'm not going into decision points because I've done another video on this. So I'm going to jump to point number eight. Number eight is not using space effectively. So with wayfinding design, you don't want to use signage. You don't want to use other wayfinding techniques if you can use space to guide people. In this picture, you can see that it guides people into the center to the main point there, and it uses paths to go take them back out again. It's a beautiful use of space through a park. It's very simple. So this goes a little bit into, dabbles into architectural design. Architectural design can be very, very important in wayfinding, and the use of space and using space effectively is important. The issue with wayfinding design, if you were designing it, a place at the very beginning is you have to involve these different parties architects signage makers the people who manage the space ideally you want to bring these different parties together so you can have an effective and well planned and well organized and well maintained wayfinding system well i'm not sure if you've experienced any of those problems and issues that i've brought up in that video i would love to get your ideas and comments below this video on youtube into the comments section. Tell us about your experiences, the solutions. Also, if you wish to subscribe to the Wayfinding channel, you can subscribe just below this video. Thank you for watching this video. I will add another video next week. See you soon. Thank you.